Okay, so things are starting to come together pr pretty well. These shelves are nice and sturdy. You can see by how I've got extra height there, there's going to be more shelves put here. I've just run out of this timber. Uh, another little conundrum I've just ran into because I've made a bit of a a bit of a boom boom when I was doing my measurements, and I've really put the, these rails too close to the top of the batteries because you can see I can only oh, actually I can't my wrist stops me from from getting my hand in there, which is going to make it very difficult um, wiring these all up. So my next step is I'm going to unscrew all these. I'll leave this one because basically underneath here, I mean, if I need to, I can put batteries there, but underneath here is more or less just a little storage area because like I've got one, two, three, four, and I'll most likely have five shelves of batteries each shelf has, well, there's 12 on this one. We can fit two more, so that's 14. So each shelf can hold 14 100 amp hour batteries. So I think, I, I dare say, I am not, I dare say, I don't think I'm gonna need more than 26 batteries. I think, I think we should be right for that. <laughs> Because this is basically, this is going to run the property, the house, and hopefully eventually be capable of charging the Hilux once it's finished. So um, that's basically why I'm building such a massive battery bank, why I have such a massive amount of solar, and why I'm dedicating a shed to like a power station essentially. So uh, at the moment, like I said, I've got four more batteries um but they're currently in use in the bathroom and then there's another six in my current battery battery bank which have been used to run power at the moment as you know i'm still running power tools and air compressors and lights and that kind of shit so this place is still powered up i've still got a solar system here this is just be building the fucking next level right here to hopefully be problem free and just give me everything I need for me and my family. So yeah, next part we'll be doing, um, seeing as those shelves are a little bit too tight, I'll uh, move those next slot of rails up a little bit to allow room and then we'll probably get started on making battery cables. So I'll just get to see a time lapse of me doing that too. So enjoy. If you are enjoying so far, um, yeah.
you're not on the ball today because I just moved all those shelves and they're still wrong. I've got the bottom one right, but I've literally made all of these ones exactly the same as they were somehow. So you get to watch me fucking get angry and move them again. <laughs> Fun times.
so as you've probably noticed, I'm making a lot of stupid mistakes with my measurements here. So I'm gonna make an executive decision to go sit down for a while, have a drink, chill, recuperate, so I'm not constantly fucking up because this is real simple shit and I'm fucking it up, which means I need a break. So I'll see you then, well you will see me literally in like less than a second, but I'm gonna go take a break. Okie doke, so I didn't film it, but I've got those all perfect now. As you can see, I can stick my hand in there now to act, oh, sorry, excuse me, to actually um, do cables up and whatnot. And this distance here is the same on every shelf. So I know I'm going to be good for everyone and I didn't fuck up this time. I made doubly sure. Don't know how I did it last time, but you know, just brain farts. That's why you gotta take a break from time to time. Um, so as you can see, those batteries there, they're basically all I have at the moment. Obviously I want all of these shelves filled, but to give you an idea, these batteries, I bought these at cost price. So this is not retail. I found somewhere to get them really fucking cheap. Cost price, these are 150 each. So that gives you an idea of, um, the money involved so and why i haven't got a full bank yet because to complete my bank uh whatever country what you're living in i'm australia it's about five and a half grand give or take to finish this battery bank but i'm saying that the amount of batteries i have here plus the ones i have in my bank already which will be moved to here originally there's another six to go here honestly you're really not going to have any issues with that the only reason i want such a humongous bank is because I'm gonna do so much out here, but your general household, this would do ya. So that's a good rule of thumb. So I am gonna take yet another break as those spies, just despite the fact that you didn't see me fixing those up, I'm just gonna have something to eat, something to lunch, have a bit of a breather, gather all the bits and pieces of um, battery cable I have laying around the place because to be honest I don't have enough money to buy a roll of brand new stuff but I'm pretty certain I've got enough bits and pieces laying around I've got heat shrink I've got brand new battery lugs so we should be able to sort something out to get at the very least most of these batteries connected together so oh, excuse me again you'll see me um doing all that soon so if you're interested in that keep posted okie dokie so I've had me a little rest uh, got these ready to go. I've gone and gathered all the bitty bobs I can find around the place. I even bought some stuff. I ducked down to the hardware and get a few things just so I knew I could do it. So uh, let's show you what I've got because I'll show you everything you need. It's pretty simple, but everything you need to basically make your own bits of cable to join batteries together. So cut the cable, strip it, crimp your lugs on, all that kind of jazz, just so you know because... You'd be surprised how easy it is. You just need some simple tools and it's just the process, you'll see. So here's all the bits of cable I've gathered. So we'll see how far it gets us, but it's all big enough. It's all not the right gauge cable, luckily. Some even have some ends on them, so that saves me a bit of time. Um, we've got in here, we've got Battery lugs, um, if you're curious, don't buy these in store, okay? If you go to like somewhere like Super Cheap Auto, those two right there will send you back about fucking 14 bucks. If you go to JCar, that'll be about six bucks. I paid, what was it? I paid about 20 bucks for 25 of them. So go figure, you can go 14, 6, or 
twenty dollars. So eBay is your friend, guys. Don't just go straight to your stores. Search around online for better prices because you, will, when you're doing stuff like this, it makes a huge difference. Because just think of how much these would have cost me. These are like one hundred and twenty-five bucks. That's 125 bucks online. I would not want to know how much it is if I bought all these in a store. It would be literally probably over a thousand. So be smart when you buy shit, guys. So putting all your battery lugs aside, the next most important thing, and it's what a lot of people tend to neglect because they get lazy, me included, but doing things properly, heat shrink, always heat shrink. Because you'll see if I've got a dodgy one here, have I? Well, technically I actually didn't make this one, but that's dodgy. They've got these little fucking that, but look how easy it slips back. So they're kind of stupid. You always do something like that. Because see how that, you can't pull it off, you can't do anything. So if you touch there and you're putting your terminals on, it stops you getting zapped. It's just, just common sense, guys. Like just a very basic safety thing you can do when making cables. I bought, this was um, 20 mil heat shrink. I think it was $8 for like, 1.2 meters so like realistically and when you're using it you're using about that much so it goes a long way so don't don't stress about heat shrink it's cheap insurance um ask me safety talk over you know i thought i'd better do some sort of you know safety sort of shit because i'm very dodgy in how i do a lot of things so i don't want to give people the wrong impression that you know you can just do willy nilly with this shit. I'm a bit rough because I've been doing this kind of stuff years, so I know, you know, generally what's more or less going to kill me and what's not. Not a good strategy to have because it's still stupid, but, you know, I'm a bit stupid and I don't really look after myself properly all the time. But I do a lot of shit, I'm exhausted, so I just get shit done. But follow my directions, but just be careful on my methods. Don't go doing too much you know the old barefoot warrior grinding no glass I, I do a lot of dodgy shit just look after yourself guys all right i don't but look after yourselves so i'm gonna stop rambling now and we'll try and film me doing some cables we'll make we'll cut and crimp and do all that jazz heat shrink them bolt them onto the batteries oh, that's what i didn't show i've got bloody so i've got me what are they? there's my bolts um, there's me lock washers, and I've also got me normal washers. So all three of those are really kind of what you need to make a nice secure connection, your battery, if you don't want them coming loose, because even though you're in a stationary shed, I don't know, shit just has a way of coming loose somehow. So the better you can make it that they're going to stay secure and a good strong connection, the better because all it means is you're going to get less resistance, you're going to get less potential of heat building up, less potential of fire, melting cables, all of that jazz. So basically, the better you can do something, you know, the better. Obviously, do what you can, as you've seen if you've watched my videos over the years. You'll probably, any electrician or any sort of person who has a lot of electricity will probably fucking cringe and fucking cover their eyes at some of the stuff I've done. But at the end of the day, I'm learning, I'm teaching myself. Um, and if I'm completely honest, I haven't got a great deal of concern about myself. As long as I don't kill myself, I'm good, you know. <laughs> I've got um, dependents that rely on me, I've got a daughter, I've got animals, you know, I've got a lovely partner, so, you know, I'm not wanting to kill myself, but I'm, I'm Kai, I'm a little bit rough, so, take what you will, but I can show you how to do shit, but make your own mind up about safety and how you do it, okay, I'm not going to knock you for that, but let's continue on. Also, just in case you're wondering... I despise shoes and I am never going to wear shoes unless I absolutely need to. I wear shoes at work, otherwise no. But 
it does have the plus of giving you some fucking mega tough feet, like, I can walk over shit, like, that people just are blown away that I can walk over without any trouble, but, you're gonna have tough like feet like me, you gotta prepare to have ugly feet, so, you can see there, you know, that's from something dropping on my toe about a month ago, I had something hit, like when it dropped there, something stabbed in there, I didn't even realise, I thought it was just a bruise, and that bruise, and then three weeks later, I noticed a little white bump, and I gave it a big old squeeze, pus came out, and it shot a splinter out, and I was like, whoo, that's nice, it felt a lot better after that, I've got this bloody chunk here, I don't know, I kicked my foot on something, but despise how it looks, that is extremely tender, if I so as much bump that on anything, it drops me to the fucking ground just a bit about, you know? <laughs> and then they got that one there. That was only about two days ago. A star picket fell on me toe. May not look like much, but I can tell you what, that was some of the most excruciating pain I've felt. I think I had to sit down for a good 10, 15 minutes and my hands were still shaking, but she'll be right, you know? I think it wasn't that long ago. Where is it? Yeah, there she is. As you can't really see it that well, my feet are dirty. But uh, there's a big old triangular scar there where I stood on a broken mug, mug, cut an artery. That put me out of action for about, I don't know, six weeks or so. That was fun. So, um, honestly, my feet are just covered in scars and scratches and hell. But you ain't going to change me because I despise shoes. And honestly, I do things a lot better with bare feet. So that's just a little cue and little, what's the word, fucking, oh, whatever the word is. Bare feet are great, but if you're going to be a barefoot warrior like me, don't expect to have pretty feet. It's a little PSA from Kai. So let's get fucking stop rambling and I'll start making these cables, eh? But you're not going to electrocute yourself, it's just cable. The only way you can electrocute yourself is it live. And as long as you put some insulation, you don't touch the live bits on the metal, you're fine. So, give it a go, guys. So being this is a 24 volt system, these are 12 volt batteries. So obviously to make them 24 volt, um, two, obviously these are gonna go in pairs. So obviously to make a 24 volt battery, if you don't know, um, each battery has a negative and a positive terminal. Um, you know, usually when you're in, if you connect a car, you have your positive and your negative you gotta to connect to. And if you fuck it up, you do things wrong. So basically, to make a 24 volt system, to make a 24 volt battery out of two 12 volt batteries, you go, like a bit hard to see, but where my finger is, is on the red, the red um, positive terminal. And then my finger there is on the black negative terminal. So when you're doing 24 volt, my best advice is put your terminals, see how I've done my terminals close together? That saves you a lot of cable because that means when you join your cables, your batteries together, make a 24 volt battery, instead of having to make a cable stretch from, you know, this, what is it? This end to that end, you simply just have to bridge 
those two gaps, which is a lot shorter, hence why I've cut all these short cables. So next, the next point for these is to strip a bit of the insulation off and then put a lug on the end. So um, there probably is, I'm sure there is, there's probably cable stripping tools. I don't have one, so I'll just show you the old school way of just being careful with a Stanley knife and stripping them that way. So let's get on to that. Right, so you can see, you know, that's the ends of the cables stripped. So a lot of mistakes people make is they go, cool, cables stripped. We'll chuck our fucking lug on there, crimp it on, and presto. And then they go, oh, fuck, the heat shrink. And generally speaking, the heat shrink you get, if it's the right size for the cable, will not go over the head. So you're kind of screwed to use this electrical tape, which is real, it just looks real dodgy. So the trick is work out how much heat shrink you need for each one. So I've probably gone a bit overkill with the size of the heat shrink I've got here, but hopefully it shrinks down. So basically you see, you want it to cover that, we'll get this a bit close together. You want it to cover that metal part and also come back along the cable a bit. So where my thumb is there, is pretty much what you want it to be. So we'll get a measurement on that. So what's, what's that? That is 35. We'll make it 40. That way it makes it safe. So we'll cut a bunch of 40 mil bits of heat shrink and then we'll start crimping and doing other stuff. Okay, so there's all our bitty bobs done to get the joiners for the batteries done to make them 24 volts. Uh, generally speaking, I'd be a bit dodgy and just use the old lighter trick to do the heat shrink, but seeing as I've got quite a lot of it to do, I thought I'd get the heat gun out. Um, so, I guess you can just watch me do this shit. Okay, so as you can just see, I fucked up yet again. It's not unusual for me. Uh, but these cable logs I've got are too big for the cable I've got. So, rather than spending like, what, a hundred and something dollars on a bunch more of these, I'm doing it technically the dodgy way. But if you look right here, I didn't do this. This is another way people do it. This was from a fucking bought item. See how it's all flat there? I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way and just stick the weight wire in there and give it a big old belt with the hammer. That'll crimp it and we'll heat shrink it and she'll be fine. So let's do that.
Okay. So that doesn't work either. <sighs> this is what I like to call a life and times a Kai. You think you plan everything right, you measure it all, you prepare yourself, you save the money, you get it, and then shit just goes wrong. Every single time. I'm not joking, every single time. But, I'll sort it out, and we'll have that done in the next video. So I hope you've enjoyed this one so far, I know. It's not obviously completely complete, but I think it's gone along enough anyway. You've seen a bit done, so I hope you've enjoyed that. And I'll see you next time either working on this, or working on something else, or whatever the fuck I'm else I'm doing. So, stay posted, things are coming out. Um, and yeah, just enjoy yourselves. Try my best to enjoy myself with all the stresses and loads I got on me, but you know, I live in a beautiful place like this. I've got some wonderful animals. I've got a daughter. I've got a wonderful partner. So, honestly, life's good, you know. I'll catch you next time, eh? Bye.